up guys, it's me, it's me, Fritz Rolly 732 and welcome to this review. And as always, how do you do? Pretty good? Okay. Now before I get on to this review, you guys, um, I have a couple things to say. In case you guys notice, uh, I changed locations. I'm no longer in my house. I am actually in my new dorm at my new golf academy. <laughs> well, it's not really a new dorm, but you get the whole thing. And just a quick tour, hmm. there's my bed and those, there's my two hat shelves, so carrying my hats for the next future episodes. So that way there's enough hats for hats of the day during those episodes. And speaking of hat of the day, uh, today's hat of the day is um, this new USGA hat that I actually got at my first USGA uh, tournament. And it was a qualifier up in St. Augustine, Florida, not Russia because you know i'm from florida so that's st augustine russia is like damn far away so holy crap <laughs> anyways moving forward so and right now this golf academy has been pretty good it's a really good transition you guys and i really needed it because i need to improve on my golf game but moving forward so and another, and as for the second part of news, I have to say, you guys, I give special thanks to the people, all the people who have seen my last episode. Like, really, I give special thanks because I checked my channel, you guys, right now, my last episode has 135 views. And in case you guys don't know what episode I'm talking about, I'm talking about my review on Captain Underpants. And I seriously, yeah, I seriously did not expect my review on Captain Underpants to get 135 views, especially over 100 views in a week. In a week. Like, seriously, I really appreciate you guys. And if I had any money at all, and if somebody, you know, bet on what episode, if... If I had a group, me and a group of friends bet on which episode of my channel would get 100 views first, I would have picked either La La Land, my review on La La Land or slash Hidden Figures, or my review on Wonder Woman, which was the ninth episode. And so, and right now, Wonder Woman has seven, so that was a long, so yeah, it's a long, yeah, I would have lost. <laughs> As for La La Land, it's the second most viewed but it still has only 40 views, about 40, specifically 39, but who cares? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, but again, special thanks to you guys, and I bet a lot of you guys who out there must have been, must be, you know, must, I guess you could, uh, let me just take a deep breath. Whew. I'm guessing most of you YouTubers out there must be really good fans of animation, so I guess, that's the reason why I must have got a lot of views. That or or the fact that it was my 10th episode, so therefore, since it's the 10th episode, it had to be special. So it must have been special to some people. So yeah, I really appreciate that. So, oh well. Anyway, so let's get enough chittering, enough chattering. Let's start rocking and reviewing, shall we? Okay, so for this episode, you guys, I'm not only going to do a review on Disney Pixar's latest Cars movie, Cars 3. I am also going to do, as promised, a review on what could possibly be the best cartoon reboot or revival or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the fifth and final season of Samurai Jack. And I kind of need the sketchbook, you guys, because there was just so many things that I needed to say for both of these because, I mean, because there was just so many things that I needed to say that I could not, you know, memorize. So that's why I need this. So anyway, with that being said, and so you know what, since I did promise you guys Samurai Jack, I'm going to start with Samurai Jack first. So here we go. In three, two, one, review. So I have to say, the first time that I actually saw the whole season five was actually the very first time that I actually saw the entire series because I have never seen an episode a season one or four yeah one through four you guys never but only but I have seen clips from watchmojo.com and Saber Sparks channel of you know of episodes up uh, from seasons one through season four so yeah and I did get you know the whole story and all that especially after watching you know season five so i get the whole thing and it did not make me confused at all it yeah i understood everything because i was just so focused on watching so i wasn't confused 
maybe a little bit in the first episode, but I totally understood what was going on through there. Maybe not from, you know, the transition from season four to season five, but I did understand what was going on. So, yeah, it did not disturb me at all. But anyway, so what are my likes and dislikes from season five? I have to say what I love. There are so many things that I like, maybe not even like, love about season five of Samurai Jack. I love the fact that Cartoon Network brought the creator back to, to, for the season. Yeah, not to, for the season. Um, because what can I say? Gendi Tart and I do apologize if I mispronounce his last name, Tartakovsky, um, is an amazing creator. Like, he created the original series of Samurai Jack, and he also created Dexter's Laboratory, which is which was a part of my childhood. I mean, come on, who can forget Dexter's Lab? And Symbionic Titan, which is a really good show, which I definitely am triggered that it got canceled because it couldn't get a freaking toy line. Seriously. Who needs a toy line? It's a great show. I mean, we don't need it. Hmm. But oh well. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Hmm. So, and going forward, so they kept the creator back, and that is great because if they didn't keep the creator back, this would have, this ship would have sank the same way as the Powerpuff Girls reboot did because they, Cartoon Network did not keep Craig McCracken when that show happened. And yeah, a lot of people are pissed off about that, and so am I. They didn't even keep the original voice actors. And I'm really, and I am especially pissed off because, you know, you know how much of a Tara Strong fan I am, you guys. And also, E.G. Daly was a part of my life as well with Rugrats, so I'm even double pissed. And they didn't even tell them that they were going to get recast. So that even makes me even more pissed off. And yeah, and I also feel that for Kathy as well. The person who plays Blossom. I forgot her last name, so. Anyway, so going forward to Samurai Jack. But anyway, what I love about it is the fact that they kept most of the voice actors. Phil Lamar, who plays Samurai Jack, and John DiMaggio, who plays the Scotsman. Ah, Aku, you're just a big baby, aren't you? You're just a big, fat old baby. Like, I love that. I just love that. And I also liked when they actually brought Tara Strong into the show. Like, her performance was really great. And that's another thing. I love the voice performances in the show, you guys. Especially, you know, especially everyone, including Tara as well. Like, I hope she gets some, I hope she gets recognition by this. In fact, I hope the whole show gets some recognition, especially the animation. Like, I love the animation. In fact, I saw Jack Splade's review of the season finale, and he said that this show was art. And Jack Splade, if you're watching this, I totally agree with you, my man. That show is art, especially from the episode four where Samurai Jack and Ashi, uh, which is Tara Strong's character, by the way, who people who haven't seen it, spoiler alert, um, when they were in the bowels of the deep, deep inside the monster that they got swallowed in, oh my gosh, there were some beautiful cre art design. I love the art designs of the creatures that were, you know, in that monster like those designs are really awesome and i love the colors it's just beautiful even throughout the series it's just amazing and let's see another thing that i like is the fact that they con the way that they concluded the series as a whole is just amazing i mean that one is just really awesome and if i had to pick a favorite episode you guys it would have to be episode six where they brought all the old characters from the original seasons back like from the original series like i love that like they brought the elephants back or the mammoths or whatever you call them um i like the archers i like the ray people the ray people were really awesome hmm. and i also like when they brought back the samurai and Jimango is back babe oh wait i'm that's scaramouche oh gosh mm. well they kind of have similar voices so i don't know i don't know but that was great seeing them back and i guess what fun fact in this episode i actually saw something from that is not samurai jack there was an easter egg that i noticed and that was the the mantis from space jam i saw that i was like oh, that's the mantis from space jam the first cartoon network uh, show from I mean the first show from Cartoon Network yeah they they put him on here and oh my gosh it was just really amazing like seriously it was just amazing that was a cool Easter egg and yeah and also my favorite part 
favorite part of not only the episodes but also the whole entire series is just the fact that scare moves just yeah do 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 wow what a freak look like a talking penis <laughs> oh my god that was just really funny like seriously i just loved it i love that joke mm, i look like a talking penis <laughs> like it just cracked me up and when i saw jack Splade's review on that episode his impression was just spot on it was just funny and if i had to say anything that i disliked it it was just the fact that the season finale was yeah the season finale the last episode was just a little bit rushed it was just the teensy bit rushed but it was fine i mean hey it was way way better than the powerpuff girls reboot like seriously this is by far the best cartoon revival of all time like probably ever since my little pony friendship is magic because the only one that was a huge success as this was my little pony friendship is magic that's the only cartoon reboot out there besides samurai jack that has been a huge success and you know we waited yeah and now finally six years later we got another cartoon reboot that's been a huge success and good thing for Cartoon Network that they brought the creator back and made some good you know voice actors and man and also Greg Baldwin, I didn't hear much diff- I mean, I did hear some differences, but his uh, voice was similar to the original voice actor, Mako. Which, man, I really- yeah, rest in peace, Mako. <laughs> man. And I actually did like how in the season finale that they did, you know, that they actually put Mako's uh, original, you know, recording voice in there. I mean, that was really, like, that really touched me. And that was, must have been heartfelt and also, wow, that is totally unbelievable to some fans. Yeah. So, yeah, and if I had to give a rating on Samurai Jack, i give it a 10 out of 10. Anyway, moving forward, uh, Cars 3. Um, I have to, if you guys want to ask, was this the best, was this movie the best Cars 3, I mean, Cars movie out of the whole entire series? And you may, and of course, yes, yes it was. It may be the best, or it could be, I would say it's either the best or the second best. The reason why I would say it's either the best is the fact that finally we get a Cars movie where it actually focuses on racing. Because Cars 1, it was just focused on characters and its setting, and the setting of Radiator Sphinx, which is totally fine. That's totally fine. Because I actually like those types of movies where they focus on characters and setting. Like, that is, I mean, it's really, you know, it really points a great presentation you know towards people it really shows a great presentation and that must have been the reason why you know cars got nominated for an oscar and you want to know why cars 2 didn't get nominated for an oscar the fact that the plot like seriously we don't need the whole the secret agent and spy thing like we didn't need that that was not necessary in fact the reason why i wanted to see cars 2 when i walked when i was in new jersey for the summer one time and when i heard cars 2 the when i saw the trailer i was really excited to see that movie but the reason why i wanted to see it was just the race part i was just focused on the race i didn't care at all at the spy thing but the problem was they were focused on that i mean i understand that was their point i mean that was the point of you know focus on the movie that it was supposed supposed to focus on the buy thing instead of the you know the race but i just wanted to see the race because the race seems much cooler i mean who cares about spies i mean we already seen 007 and 007 is already good so who cares but cars 3 this one finally talks about racing which is amazing and that's what i like and i bet nascar and as a nascar fan of myself i mean I was such a NASCAR fan in that movie that I wore my NASCAR Hall of Fame in that. So as a NASCAR fan, I am touched by this and I love it. Like they talked about racing and it was just amazing. And they even showed some legendary racers that, you know, Doc Hudson were friends of. And it was just amazing. And oh my gosh, they even, a lot of people can relate to this. Like the whole rookies, you know, showing up and actually becoming one on the up wanting yeah one upping the veterans like i can relate to that because i've seen that so many times <clears throat> jordan spieth 
Like he was a rookie. Hmm. Like he was, even though he was a pro, he was still a rookie in the field. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't expecting him to win the Masters. Nobody was, or U.S. Open, or yeah. Like I can relate to that. So having the fact to, you know, see this, it was just, you know, it was like so relatable and it was just great. And I also love the new characters, especially Cruz Martinez. Like she kind of reminds me of a Cars version of Special Agent Wild as a Spickable Me. Like seriously. Like you can tell because of her energy, enthusiasm, and also the dance moves. Like, yeah. It, like it was just funny and awkward at the same time, but it was mostly funny. Just like, you know, <clears throat> when a special agent wild was um when da was dancing around and being funny like and crazy <laughs> excuse me um but yeah and of course another thing that i like is uh the animation pixar really improved with this animation in this cars movie other than the other one I mean, the other two, I mean, they were finely animated, but I heard from uh, Paleo Steno that Cars 2, like, when you see the parts in the building, it starts to, the animation starts shipping off, or shifting off, or something, I don't know, but I have heard from him that he actually said that the animation in this movie was better, and it, I had to agree, especially the part where you actually see the Florida racetrack, like, you, the beach sequences, I mean, it was just really amazing, and all that. I loved it. And going back to the new characters, oh my gosh, Cru speaking of Cruz, there is so much shipping between Cruz Martinez and Lightning McQueen. Like, seriously, I ship them. As much as Lightning McQueen has a girl, yeah, as much as Sally and Lightning are boyfriend and girlfriend, and, you know, Cruz Martinez and Lightning are more like mentor and student, I ship it. I ship Cruz and Lightning. I'm all for Cruz McQueen. I like him. I like them together as a couple. And the last thing that I will say that I like about this movie is the fact that they gave tri so much tribute to Paul Newman. Like, I loved it. Like, if this movie would have played next year, this would have been taken, you know, taking place in the 10th, during the 10th anniversary of Paul Newman's death. Which, by the way, for those of you who don't know who Paul Newman is, he happens to be the guy who played Doc Hudson. And, you know, he was a great character and it was great at voice acting for that movie. And so I just love the fact that they gave so much tribute to him and actually gave so much, you know, you know, footage of, I mean, yeah, so much scenes and showing us of Doc Hudson and representation of him. So I loved it. I truly loved it. Anyway, as for my dislikes for Cars 3, I did not like Jackson Storm. Like, I really hate him. Like, he does not care. Like, he was being one of those stereotypical uh, sports bad guys where he does not care for the sport at all. He just cares about winning and the glory and the fame. Like, I really hated it. I hated him more than Chick. Like, if you watch the movie, you're, like, deliberating, okay, which one's the bigger bitch? Is it Chick or is it Jackson Storm? And if you ask yourself, is it Jackson Storm? Then, yes, it's Jackson Storm. He's the bigger bitch. Hmm. Like, seriously. Oh, my God. And another thing that I didn't like was, I mean, the fact that Lightning McQueen, after he failed on the, you know, simulator and, you know, destroy the place, um, I thought he was going to go back and actually start over and go, okay, I'm just going to listen to the trainer. But instead, he was kind of being selfish and just decided to go race on dirt and stuff. And I feel bad, you know, I feel bad for the trainer because it seemed as though Lightning was being selfish. So, but good thing though, when his way turned out, but he was lucky enough that his way turned into a good direction, you know, went into a good direction. No pun intended, by the way by the direction get it yeah anyway um so yeah i felt like lightning was being a bit selfish there and i i did like and actually there's another thing that i actually like they actually did not go the rocky mood the rocky way like i i thought that they were actually going a little bit the way towards rocky but they actually didn't instead of lightning you know doing all this training and stuff and racing instead he did race portionally but then all of a sudden cruz went out for lightning and you know she got her chance to experience her first race and i like that it shows that lightning actually you know does care and actually you know has a heart and stuff and i like that i was really touched by it 
<clears throat> and again, I love these two characters together. I love when these two characters are together. They're really amazing. I love the connection and the chemistry. And if I had to rate this, I give it an 8.25 out of 10. It was just really good. And if I had to rate it on IMDb, of course it would be an 8 out of 10. But overall, I will say it's probably going to be the sec. It's either the best or the second best. I mean, I feel like it should be the best, but at the same time, I kind of like critically. I give the first. I think the critically. I think the first one is better than the third one. But at the same time, fan wise, I like the third one better than the than the first. But then again, that's kind of like me saying that I like Finding Dory than Finding Nemo, which is true. I like Finding Dory better than Finding Nemo. I mean, it's nothing wrong. I mean, critically, I like Finding Nemo better. It's just that, I don't know, Finding Nemo seems too cla too much of a classic, and i already seen it numerous times, and so I'm kind of over it. But anyway, here to talk about Cars 3, and oh, by the way, the Pixar short. Uh, Pixar short, Lou, I thought it was pretty good, and definitely a lesson learner to some people, and I did like that. Hopefully that that gets nominated for an Academy Award or a Golden Globe for Best Animated Short Film. So yeah. Anyway, with that being said, it is now over 21 minutes. And hope you guys enjoy this video. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you dislike it. Already told you my hat of the day. If you guys have any other uh, suggestions on what movies I should do or review. And if you, yeah, if... You have anything to say about the things that I just did a review on? Type it in in the com comments below. And as for future episodes, I am for all you bronies out there. I have seen the MOP official trailer, and I'm definitely gonna do a review on that uh, in the next episode. And I'm also, and as promised, I am definitely. It's now the season finale. The se I mean, the mid-season finale already happened in MOP, so. I'm definitely going to do a review on the first half of Season 7 as well. And as for another video, next week I am definitely going to give you guys a big announcement that I am going to a certain place where certain people are going to, certain amazing, talented, and creative people are going to be there at that place. <laughs> anyway, and if you... And if you guys want to get notified on this channel, click on the bell and all as well. If you want to subscribe, click up here. If you want to check out my other videos in my series, click down here. And as always, I tip my hat to you guys for a good show. And I'll see you guys later in the future.